Y'all, I think the way we word things as believers of Jesus Christ, as followers of Jesus Christ, is crucial. Our terminology can determine our steps. The, the way we think about a thing. Actually, it starts with a thought, right? How many of you have, of you have heard that you are a generational curse breaker in your family? I know I have. <laughs> and then you took on that burden that God never put on you, by the way, that you were to break curses. <laughs> Y'all, I think we, we, we get away so much from the simplicity of Christ. And when we do that, Paul speaks of how we can be beguiled like Eve was by the serpent. And we begin to complicate just being obedient. So... Let's clear this up with the right terminology. Because we're going to have what we say. Life and death is in the power of the tongue, right? And we, and they that love it will eat the fruit thereof. Let's stick to the word of God. Let's stick to the simplicity of Christ. And bring every thought under the obedience of Christ. But let's, let's get this straight. We are not under any generational curses as believers okay <laughs> isn't that crazy <laughs> now don't point the arrow at me I'm just the messenger from what God has showed me from the insight he's given me and blessed me with it's just the simplicity of the word of God. You can't just read the word. The Holy Spirit has to reveal the word and open it up. When you see that Jesus rose from the dead, some still did not believe. And they were looking right at the word. They were looking right at the word made manifest. The word that became flesh. They were looking right at him. And Jesus still had to open up the scripture to them, open up their eyes, had to let Thomas see the nails, go, uh, the nail prints in his hands. Some still did not believe, even as he ascended, the Bible says, and some, some doubted. So everybody might not catch this, but because we want to hold on to our traditions, we make the word of God of none effect. And it's simple, y'all. It's, it's simple. It's, but even with it being simple, we have to ask the Lord for eyes to see and ears to hear. Not what we heard the preacher say. And because we've heard it so many times, we count it as commandment of God. And Jesus strictly warned against the leaven of the Pharisees that... <laughs> This is not the bread from heaven. He said, I am the bread of life. Listen to me. And we're not listening to Jesus. We're listening to men. We're listening to the doctrines of devils and we're being led astray by every wind of doctrine. And so you are not the generational curse breaker. Christ is. Christ in you is. And I think that is so vital that we make that distinction. Oh, but yeah, that's what we mean when we say we are the generational curse breaker. But you've really got to make that clear distinction that you are not the generational curse breaker. Because what that does is puts a burden on you that God did not put on you. He said, cast your burdens on me for I care for you. Your cares, your burdens your weight and this is what also the pharisees did was try to put weights and burdens on people that god did not do he didn't he didn't he didn't do it 
He wasn't doing it. Amen. So, bring every thought into captivity. Take captive every thought and bring it in cap captivity under the what? Obedience of Christ. As long as you are walking in covenant with God through Christ, because that's how we're saved. Because of the finished works of Jesus Christ. It is finished. Y'all, somebody put in the in the comments, it is finished. You are not breaking any generational curses. You I want to get into another subject about manifesting. We put so many burdens on ourselves. All new ages is a burden. It's idolatry and it's a burden. Yeah. So the burden bearer is Jesus Christ. He bore our sins and our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him and by his stripes we are healed. If we just get back to Jesus <laughs> under the obedience of Christ by his stripes Come unto me, all you who are heavy laden and burdened, and I will give you rest. Jesus, take the limits off. Take the burdens off. Get back to the simplicity of Christ. He completed the work. Now, the work in you to become Christ-like is ongoing, right? So what I do believe, and it's true, is that you can open the door and give the devil an opportunity to come in, right, with evil. At any point, you could stumble, you could fall. Righteous man falls seven times, but he gets back up, right? But the thing is, when you're, when you're under Christ, when you're in Christ and Christ is in you, you are covered. A curse causeless shall not stand. It, it, it won't, as the book of Proverbs, it will not do the intended thing that it was sent to do. It's the opposite of the word of God because God said no word from him will ever fail, right? But curses will fail. <laughs> you cannot curse whom God has blessed. My God, Numbers 23. That God just led me to the other day. <laughs> I don't have a lot of scripture memorized, but I can tell you that the word is in my heart. It's in my heart. I have hid the word in my heart. You know, and we're going to need to do that because the time is coming and the time is already here where men are not enduring sound doctrine. They're not preaching sound doctrine and they make for commandments the traditions of men, which makes the word of God of none effect. Not that the word of God is not more powerful than any two edged sword able to divide both soul and spirit, bone and marrow, and discern the very intents of the heart. The word of God is powerful, right? It's alive, but men twist it, take from it, add to it, and lay on men heavy burdens that the Lord never, never ordained, never commanded. Amen. So let's get free. Let's get free today. For whom the Son has set free is free indeed. Yes, there's witchcraft, right? Yes, you know, 
Balaam was sent to curse the children of Israel, but he couldn't. If you are truly in Christ, he said, I can't curse them whom God has not cursed. <laughs> I, I can't. It's not going to fall because it's causeless, which means you can, as I said before, open up the door to demons. Um, you can give space to the devil to operate in your life. Right? Now, there may be loved ones in your family, right? Who have not received Christ. And they have not taken on the lineage of Jesus Christ. Because once you receive Christ, now you're in the family of God. There's no more, my family is, the, no, now your family is the kingdom of God. Je they, ooh, when Jesus was healing and he was, you know, preaching, they came to him and said, look, Jesus, your mother. And not being disrespectful, but respectfully, <laughs> respectfully, Jesus said, my mother, my family, because I think he listed a few family members, mother, brother, sister, are those that do the will of God. I know they were like, wow he just shut us down yes that's my birth mother yes 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 it's spiritual when he talks about even being born again it's spiritual he's not talking about nicodemus going into your mother's womb again eyes to see ears to hear what the spirit of the lord is saying to the church right so i didn't mean to make this video so long but this was adamant this was pressing upon me because it's something that we have heard and I know I have heard for years and years and years since I've been saved um that we have been chosen some of us to break generational curses no that was already done that was already finished you're toiling you're 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 <sighs> you're taking on burdens that the Lord did not place on you he is the generational curse breaker. He was the first fruits, right? Our brother. He took on the punishment that we deserve and the propitiation for our sins. Without the shedding of blood, there is no remission of sins. He did that. If not, that means we all have to go die because the wages of sin is death. But the gift, don't forget the rest of that scripture, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Let's get back to the word. Let's get back to the word living in us. Let's get back to the word. The simplicity of Christ. He. bore our iniquities our transgressions all of it was laid upon him we are not out here breaking the generational curses in our family I, i'm <laughs> and this is strictly biblical based knowledge and wisdom amen so the burden bearer is Christ. Let's not lay on men burdens, weights that the Lord did not lay on men or lay it on ourselves. And we're prone to doing this. We're prone to making it more complicated than what it is. We're, we're prone to trust what we see. That's why the Bible says walk by faith and not by sight. Have faith in God, not in yourself. <laughs> because you can fail. Man can fail you. It is better to trust in the Lord who made the heavens and the earth than to trust in princes, than to trust in the arm of flesh.
Amen. So there is no curse because that can, you know, come to you causeless. Now, like I said, if there's a door open to the enemy with willful sin in your life, fornication, adultery, all these things um, that I want to say in the book of Corinthians, first or second Corinthians, talks about that will keep you out of the kingdom of heaven. None of these people that practice these things shall inherit the kingdom of God. Be not deceived. You know, if you practice sexual immorality, you know, if you practice rebellion against God, witchcraft, then, you know, you will not inherit the kingdom of God. And inheriting the kingdom of God is walking in your Christ-like identity. Because the kingdom of God is not here or there. It is within you. Right? So, if you receive Christ. So, let no man deceive you. You are not the generational curse breaker. Jesus is. And it must be said just that way. I, I know I'm the generational curse breaker in my family. No, baby. No, no, no. Change that wording because it does matter. How you say a thing. What you say. You shall have what you say. So now it's on you to break the curses in your family. Now it's on you to set people free. And, and now you're so dictating people's, you know, conduct and thinking it's your fault if they don't get free. Wow, you're blaming yourself for things that Jesus has already taken care of. If you accept Christ, all you got to do is confess with your mouth, believe in your heart that Jesus Christ died on the cross for our sins. That the completed work was finished when he gave up the ghost and he died and he, he bled and he rose again. It says, now we are seated together with him. We've been crucified together with him, right? And now we are no longer dead in our sins and our trespasses. But now we have risen with him in heavenly places. We're seated next to him on the right hand of the father. And all spiritual blessings or gifts belong to us. Amen. A curse calls this will not land. You cannot curse whom God has blessed. So now when you have entered into the kingdom of God and you have been truly born again, filled with the Holy Spirit. Jesus Christ is the Lord of your life. You abide in him and he abides in you. The curse is broken. <laughs> As you walk under the obedience of Jesus Christ. And in no way do I mean that spiritual warfare is over, that you don't have to cast down imaginations, that you don't have to pray against anything, right? Or rebuke anything or cancel anything in the name of Jesus. But remember, it's in the name of Jesus, not in your name, not by your might, not by your power, but by his spirit, saith the Lord. So watch how we word these things because it does matter. We, I reiterate, we are not the generational curse breakers. Man, and that's so freeing. That's so liberating to know that it's not on me. <laughs> that it's not my responsibility to clean everybody in my family. To, to scrub them and wash them. <laughs> To make sure they get saved. Do you know that we were chosen unto salvation? That if you accept Christ, it's because the Holy Spirit drew you. We didn't choose him. He chose us. My God. For he first loved who? Us. For he chose who? Us. For he predestinated us to do the will of the, will of the Father. 
Jesus kept saying, I was, I know where I'm coming. I know where I'm from. My kingdom is not of this world. I was sent. 